The Java language has 51 key words that are strictly reserved. That is, you can't use any of these to name anything. Now, most of them you're familiar with because you've seen them in action at one time or another in this course, but you need to be able to recognize all of them. The keywords const and go to are reserved, but they're not implemented and serve no purpose at all in the Java language. You should remember the final keyword. When it's used as a modifier on a data item, it turns the data into a constant. When it's used on a class definition, the class cannot be extended. The instance of keyword is also a Boolean operator that returns true or false depending on whether or not an object is a member of a certain class or implements a certain interface. Remember, if a class implements an interface, all the subclasses inherit that implementation of the same interface. This is a modifier used for a method to indicate that the method is implemented as a native executable code. The most common native language is C, but native methods can be implemented in other languages as well. Strict FP is short for strict floating point. You can use it as a modifier on a single method or on an entire class. It has to do with the floating point code that's generated by the compiler. Without this declaration, the floating point code is more relaxed about certain things that normally don't matter. But if you're creating a program where the floating point operations need to be scrupulously accurate, this modifier will guarantee that the code is generated to do just that. This modifier has to do with multiple threads. Anything that is declared as synchronized will cause one thread to wait while another thread is accessing the item. A synchronized method will not simultaneously be executed by two threads. A transient data item is one that doesn't need to be included when the object is serialized and packaged for transmission. The data item is considered to be temporary and not really a part of the defining data for the object. It's just a work area. A data item is declared as volatile to notify one thread that another thread may change its value at any time. A thread should always come back to the source to get the value instead of trusting a copy that it may have stored away somewhere. The rest of the keywords you've all seen before, some more than once. A couple of the ones that you haven't seen will be in upcoming lessons, but you need to be familiar with all of them.